Today, we're going deep. We're getting dark. One of us may even get hurt. That's right. We're going hunting. Just like our wildlife peers, we look for prey, find innovative ways to catch them, and then we feast. Can you guys guess? It's not a fruit. It's not a vegetable. That's right, it's rat meat. Over the course of hundreds of years, cultures across the world have managed to maintain hunting traditions. That's so, the sound they're trying to create yeah, to this, attract this, the best. Improving standards and safety risks. Realistically, it's not the most dangerous thing in the world, but I mean... Ah! Today we're counting down our best ever most insane hunting excursions, where the only rule is to catch our prey before we become prey ourselves. Our journey begins in a small village in Bali, Indonesia, where we meet a fearless hunter, known to most locals as the Dragon Lady. Before you jump to conclusions and assume we're talking about fire-breathing beasts like those from Game of Thrones, we're not. Our dragon lady hunts something far more vicious and challenging to capture, dragonflies. These expert flyers have been around from the dawn of time. They're one of the first winged insects to evolve some three centuries ago. Get in there! I missed it. This is more intense than you guys think. As effortless as the dragon lady makes it seem, Moving up to 35 miles per hour, they're actually remarkably challenging to catch. The dragon lady moves with a stealth and swift motion. She's got a double kill! Capturing her prey in a sticky net, impossible for them to escape. What? You have like eight of them! After plucking off the dragonfly's wings and placing it in her donkey. Dunko? Dunko? Donkey! Donkey! The cooking process can begin. The dragonflies are added as the main protein in Indonesia's famous pipis for a crunchy, protein-packed treat. This is probably it has a cure for cancer in there or something. I think so. Crunchy. Crunchy. Chunky. Mm -hmm. Man, that coconut tastes great. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry, I'm a little blown away right now. Where are we? <laughs> What's going on? Did I just eat a dragonfly? Number seven truly needs no introduction. Rat hunting in Myanmar. Our weapon of choice, the slingshot. We're hunting, anything could happen. Hunting these rodents is no walk in the park. They're fast and surprisingly smart. In the fields, one hour meets the next, and you begin to understand why after 150 episodes, Tom never actually caught Jerry. We've been out here a couple hours now. No rats, no creatures of any kind have we seen under this blazing hot sun. But, oh dude, if you just had a bag of rats this whole time, we, you could have just given me, oh, there's blood too. Don't worry, unlike New York rats, these critters spend their lives rummaging through cane fields rather than back alley trash. Myanmar is one of the few countries where rat meat is a staple in many diets. Field rats are high in protein and surprisingly tasty when prepared properly. Marinate in a mixture of seasonings, deep fry or grill, and you'll have yourself a rat a la carte. This is some lungs, heart, what is this even? Is that a liver? Producers in the background just going, don't. No, don't do it. You brought me here. Oily, kind of fatty meat. I hate to be that guy, but it tastes like fried chicken. I'm definitely not gonna regret this, right? He's like, no way you can catch that. It's very dangerous. But he can try. What's the worst that can happen? It's not a true hunting video until someone mentions crocodiles. Number six in our countdown brings us all the way to Cienaga de Zapata, Cuba. Comfortably atop the reptile food chain, crocs are friends to no one and enemies to all. These freshwater crocs are moderately small, but as Wikipedia would describe, highly aggressive. We visit a crocodile breeding facility and conservation camp that houses over 4,000 assorted crocodilia, selling a maximum of 100 per year to finance the facility and maintain the crocodiles. My longtime buddy Oro and I are in for the shock of our lives. Oro, listen, you have to approach these. What's the reasonable reason to touch to them? To build courage. Like any other experienced hunter, we've got to get prepared. Our prey's weakness. What should I do? Yes. You bop it on the nose, huh? Yeah. Is there a weakness? Oh, really? Bopping yeah. them on the nose is there a weakness? You can kill them if you hit them hard in the nose. Equipped with Cuba's finest Pinterest DIY catcher pole. Oh yeah, no! The aim is hook the croc by the neck and try not to get bitten. I'm just gonna pretend like I don't even want to catch any crocodiles. Uh -huh. 
Oh, I got one. I'm gonna reel it in. Come on, buddy. Can we involve Oro? Don't worry. Okay. You got this, man. Ah! Yeah, you got it. The worst part is over. Now to eat. Grilled or sauteed, these crocs suddenly don't seem too intimidating anymore. Bon appetit, my friend. It's a texture that's kind of between chicken and fish. Is it cheese? Well, I'm really impressed. Sir, you killed it. Thank you, my friend. Actually, Oro helped kill it, but you did well with the cooking. Coming in at number five, we're fairly certain this creature played the lead role in the Alien trilogy, Warasubo. Spoiler alert, unlike in the 1986 classic, this slimy sucker didn't just pop out of Sigourney Weaver in the epic chestburster scene. Warasubo are actually found in rural parts of Japan, hunted as prey by subsistence hunters. Warasubo are a type of eel found in muddy coastal waters in Japan's Fukuoka prefecture. They're not easy to look at, in wet or dry form, and they're even harder to hunt. To capture a Warasubo, my co-host Shizzy and I must trudge through the mud on a tiny plank of wood that wouldn't hold up in Titanic. Jizzy, can I say I'm glad that I let you choose the adventure this time? You made me suffer on this trip. You deserved it. So it might be better to split up. Oh, okay. Yes. That's what we usually do. Hour four of mud fishing. We're having a lot of fun, and we've caught zero fish! Even the guy who's an expert, he looks like he's given up to. The physical effort this takes is massive as we spear at these hidden creatures with maximum force. Oh, shit! Oh, shit! You got one? Oh, shit! Oh, I got one! Yes! Ah! Ah! There's no way it's still alive. It's definitely still alive. But that's just its nervous system. Yeah, what does she think? She's like, yeah, it's still alive. <laughs> <laughs> if you really look into their underdeveloped eyes, large mouth, and terrifying fangs, you'll find something truly beautiful. They've managed to swim their way into the hearts and stomachs of those brave enough to look past their frightening facade. It's bold, it's daring, it's alt-right somehow too. Alt-right? <laughs> Even when consumed raw, remember, don't think, just chew. It's very chewy. I like it. The taste itself, it's not off-putting, it's not fishy, but honestly, the outside skin is like sandy and coarse. It's like grade one sandpaper. Well, little guys, thank you for giving your life. That was pretty good, actually. The Minahasan people of North Sulawesi, Indonesia, are no beginners when it comes to hunting, helping them land the coveted number four spot on our hunting countdown. Due to the sloping lands and lack of water, farming is nearly impossible. They've had to learn how to live off the protein available to them in their region. I heard this market was wild and it does not disappoint. Protein like snakes, rats, and bats. So how do we hunt bats? Step one, make a net from 17 foot tall electricity posts. We're gonna put the bamboo up and hopefully those bats will get stuck. To lure the bats into the net, the crafty hunters create a high pitched bat like squeal using some wood and a machete. Okay, That's so, the sound they're trying to create yeah, to this, attract this is, the bats. Yeah. Step two, hunt in the dead of night, relying solely on sound and not sight. How do they know where the bats are? There's firefly over there. Does that mean bats? Yeah, it means bats. It's pitch black and any light will scare away our prey. Without the fire, it's like completely pitch black. It's a little bit eerie. Sounds hard? That's because it is. All right, we're looking up in the tree. Right now they found a tiny bat out there. They're using the piece of wood on the knife to create that bat sound. Guys, they're about to put up the net. Can we turn off the light? But they've got the net spread apart, hoping something's gonna fly through. And right now, he's just kind of moving the net back and forth. I know you guys can't see anything. What is that sound? Oh, we got it, we got it, we got it, we got it. We just got one here. Wow, we got this tiny bat. The Minahasan people have perfected the art of hunting these vampires without compromising safety or technique. Oh my God, sounds like a baby crying. Well, I don't really have anything to say. He just, did he just, he just, he just bit the fucking yeah. neck. We've caught our meal and now it's time to cook. Preparation is extremely important and luckily for us, we have Indonesia's premier bat chef, Jelly. Jelly inspects the meat. The male one tastes better than the female one. Did she just rip off its penis? Yeah, it is. Chops it up and throws it in a steaming wok with plenty of Indonesian herbs and spices, creating a green lantern-like broth and fresh aroma. This smells, oh my gosh. I know, right? Tons of fresh flavors and scents. Look at this. I've got this stretchy piece of bad. <laughs> what is she? 
the flavor, it's like a very dark meat, kind of organ-y. The most weird part is that, you know, I just ripped open the, a bat's head to get a tongue. Oh. Otherwise, if I was just blindfolded and I had to eat it, I'd be like, I don't know, what is it? You like, know maybe. What, what? It's just the fact that it looks like this that I think might be disconcerting to some people. Yeah. Not me, not me. If you aren't feeling fear creep through your body yet. Guys, can we keep going? I don't know if we can keep going. Allow us to introduce number three on our countdown. Deep in the violent Pacific Ocean, we find a sea creature that most locals don't even know exists. Isopods. Though they're commonly believed to be the scavengers of the sea, these bottom dwellers are actually carnivores, feasting on slow-moving or dead sea animals. Their cockroach-like appearance doesn't make them exactly appetizing, but their taste is unexpectedly decent. You gotta be a psycho to eat this. team is taking on the aggressive sea, battling the waves and motion sickness for a taste of one of the world's most unique delicacies. After pulling up our net from the deep abyss, we get what we came for. Mr. Hasegawa expertly pops these suckers at the midsection, releasing the stomach's contents and an overly pungent aroma. Are you gonna throw up? Oh no! Throw these bad boys right in the boat's chimney hole and wait until they're golden brown or jet black and enjoy. Here we go. Bushy. It's a little sweet, a little bit of exhaust fumes and charcoal, and then a little bit of crabby kind of flavor. And I think we're good, and I think you guys feel good. You feel resolution. We went out there, we got the thing, I ate it. Slithering in at number two on our list is unsurprisingly Burmese python hunting in the Florida Everglades. While these pythons do in fact originate from the Southeast Asian country of Myanmar, since the 20th century, they have become an established breeding population in this Southern Florida region. They are currently considered an invasive species preying on a wide variety of birds, mammals, and crocodilian species. While non-poisonous, according to Siri, I get bit almost every trip I go down there. It's extremely painful, it punctures down in a muscle. They actually do have a little bit of venom on their back lands. It's gonna swell you up, it's gonna irritate you, and their long teeth breaking off in you. You can get infection, you gotta cut them out. Why are we doing this? This is exactly what I wanted to hear before heading out on our six hour middle of the night hunt with Florida's own professional hunter, Mike, the Python Cowboy. Be ready to wrestle it. It's probably gonna double back and try to attack you. Don't let go of it. Don't throw the snake. What I do is I stay behind the snake. I dance around it and pick my moment to grab its head. seeing a branch and thinking that it's a snake and it's not, my ADD is through the roof. We are literally in alligator infested waters right now. Do you feel this muck you're walking in? Yeah. They can actually bury themselves in it where you'll barely even see them underwater. Generally snakes like to find shelter underneath any kind of random object. We're gonna flip these over and see what we can find underneath. Yeah, nothing. Hour four of hunting and still nothing. Hold on, is that something? Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Oh, that's Python, Python, Python. After hours of tirelessly searching. There's one, he's on the move, he's on the move. Afraid to even blink. Nice size. We spot our predator. Grab our tail, bring it, bring it up in front of the truck. My master has taught me exactly oh what to do so in this moment. Stay calm. Hey. No, 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 no. Move swiftly, okay. approach from the back. Don't let go of it, don't throw the snake. Oh, should I, okay. You didn't like it's, that, huh? The key is to not hesitate. Time to execute. Don't jerk away if it bites you. Oh. You got lucky, oh, son. Oh, no. Go for it. Go for it. Don't hesitate. Beautiful. Uh, not I'm gonna really. go get a bag. All right, you get a bag. I'll just hang out here. We'll talk. The good news is once you de-skin the snake, it looks, well, exactly like a snake. Cut the monster into equal pieces. Season it with your special snake sauce and grill. If you just kind of use all the tools, hands, forks, knives. <gasps> These chunky slices are hard to chew, but are packed with flavor. I like the sauce, and the sauce is a good pair for the meat itself. It goes well with it. Well, pretty damn good. Do you think this will be your new thing? No. Maybe you become, oh, okay. No. Bum, bum, bum. Our final hunt takes us to the wild, wild southern USA. In these parts, hunting is a trade learned mere moments after teething. In Alabama, the animal most commonly hunted is the wild boar. These feral hogs are among the most destructive, invasive species in the United States today. They destroy two acres of peanut in one night. Taking down prized agriculture, eroding soil, and feasting on any livestock in sight. 
first order of business is making sure you're equipped. I switch off the safety and I slowly squeeze the trigger. And prepared to handle a hunting rifle. Ah. If I can teach you one important lesson, oh, no. do the exact opposite of what I did. Can you feel it? Just like, I know that you're dragging thread through my skin. But alas, the hunt must go on. It's 5 a.m., time to hunt. After no time at all, my hunting partner in crime, Dylan, and I spot our hairy prey in the distance. There's two right there. Here, you can walk a little bit closer. Get into proper form. Find your breath, aim, and fire. Now, it's time to cook up these porkers. Section the meat, stuffing it with cream cheese before wrapping it in thick, juicy bacon. Grill, and then serve with your classic southern side dishes. Deer meat baked beans, boar rice, and the classic lightning bread for a quintessential southern comfort meal. Are we going to the I like it. When you put it all together, the bacon, the cream cheese, the jalapenos, the taste is awesome. We did the hog hunt, we got the hog, and finally, it all led to this, hanging out with you guys and eating some good ass food. Cheers to that. Amen. And cheers also. Yeah, yeah, I love it. Thank you guys. Throughout our travels, we've come to realize one significant fact. Food brings people together. I go. Whether that be the preparation and cooking, the meal itself, or how the food was acquired, it promotes fraternity and often fosters the principles of sustainability. People across the world hunt for varied reasons, whether that be because hunting is the only resource they have to get their food or because it's a farm-to-table activity passed down from generation to generation. There's something to be said about putting in the work and reaping the reward. Guys, that is it for this one. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next time. A Peace! Peace. Batman. Batman, that was what I was thinking at the beginning of the video. Yeah, Batman, Batman, not bad guy. Best ever food review show, bandanas, for you and your entire extended family. Now you can finally stop the sweat on hot days or important job interviews. You can cover up your receding hairline. You can pretend to be the karate kid. You can lead a summit on climate change. You can hide from your responsibilities. You could hide that embarrassing tattoo. Or you can look like the world's most lovable food review show host. Oh, wow. For each order, you will receive three bandanas in three different colors, red, black, and white. This is a one-of-a-kind, unique design you will only find on our website. Visit our store and check out all of our merch at shopbesteverfood.com.